What is good? Thumbs ups. That's what's good. Thumbs ups. Thumbs up. Big O. All right. We got a quick one. One thumb. We'll take one thumb from Big Co. We got glasses. Big Co. On the podcast tonight. How's it going, Big Co? Going good. Going good. Yeah, I, I gave you the two thumbs. Okay. Came in. I, I did come in weak with the one thumb. You wanted two thumbs. You got two thumbs. Oh, went out of the screen there with the two. You know. Yeah, you got to keep it. Had to bring it back. Yep. Jay Wayne, how you doing? I'm ready to roll. Let's go. <laughs> right, I'm gonna need Stu to just take a break. Yeah. Lay off the chotch and let's just get a nice, easy, calm video slash podcast. All right, we're gonna do a. I'm doing fine. Thank you guys. Um, oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't ask. Don't care. Yeah. All right. Tonight we're gonna do a, a recap of an actual. Uh, rookie draft that we did non super flex non tight end premium only half point PPR so no uh, fun at all oh yeah. gosh yeah. get rid of the half point PPR <laughs> no fun league so this is the second year of the league uh, so this is basically our inaugural rookie draft here the maiden voyage if you will and uh, we happen to have three first round picks. So, you know, we lost uh, maybe a couple of pivotal draft points. We moved back and moved around and gained more assets. So our team wasn't quite finished yet going into this season. Um, and we, we ended up with having the one, one, the one five and the one twelve. we earned the one five, um, right. and we it's, acquired in, the other two in this particular league. Well, the first season, you play to get the first pick overall in the loser's bracket. Uh, we happen to have that guy's pick from the startup draft that we got. We got two extra first, like you mentioned. One happened to be the 1-1. One, one, one happened to be the one twelve. Sometimes it works out that way. Uh, the league voted to change it. So now it's just last place gets first pick. But uh, gotta stay never gonna, you're never going to win that one. It's always mm -hmm. whoever got fucked is gonna, always going to be mad about the way the loser's right. bracket goes. Right. Sure. Either way is fine. Let's, let's keep it moving. All right, so we are going to kick this thing off. We have the 1-1. One, one. Any other details that you guys need to throw in there before we get rolling here? Everybody feel good about what we're doing? So this is an actual draft. This is a $100 league for some people that talk about fantasy football. Probably a big money league for them. Obviously, it's the three of us splitting it. We're having a good time. You know, not 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 small potatoes, not a nothing league. So we want to bring this one to you here. So 1-1, one, one, we're on the clock. We put it up for uh, debate, see, see, or uh, you know, for sale. See if anybody wants to bite. Give us anything crazy. Do anything wild. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Casey was at a going to a concert, and it was basically we were like, are we just taking Harris here and letting the clock run, and or, or you know, and just and going to pick two so we can get you know closer to our one five pick. Twelve hour uh, clock. That's that's a big that's a big kicker here. We do have all day. But in some leagues, if you take all day, they get real mad. But don't don't just ignore <laughs> it. Just ignore it and take your time and make the trade if you can make it. All right, keep going. <laughs> so, um, after it was decided through text messages through the three of us that it was all right if we got something decent to move back from one one to one two because we didn't know if the guy was going to at one one was going to take um, Harris to begin with. It could have been Jamar Chase. Um, could have been Kyle Pitts. It could have been Kyle Pitts. It could have been ETN. More than likely not Javante Williams, but it could. Have, it didn't necessarily have to be Harris. So I did get in, the, slide into his DMs there, and just say, you know, what what are you thinking here? Yada yada yada. And he was like, well, I, I'm I'm in between on two guys, and I got them right, rated the same, and um, graded the same or something. And um, of course, at that point, I'm thinking he's thinking, okay, well, Harris or ETN. Jay, in case he doesn't care if we if we if we make enough, but my argument was, but before we go off of Harris, it needs to be enough to go off of Harris because of the volume that I believe he's going to get in Pittsburgh. Of course, I love ETN just fine, but I think Harris is the is the one one, especially in half yeah. PPR, um, no tight end premium. I think it's just a, a no a no no brainer. You just take Harris and move on. Um, but if you know. I knew, Jay, I knew Jay Wayne wanted ETN real bad, and I knew Casey really didn't care too much if we got paid enough to do it. So I asked the guy, the one-two, if he would give us Robert Woods. And in some leagues, that may be 
a home run. Somebody might say, I'll do that in a heartbeat. First of all, you don't know how people feel about Robert Woods and you don't how, know how passionately somebody feels about going from one, one, two to one, one. And if you don't ask, you'll never get the right answer. Um, so he said, of course, he, he said, no, um, we went back and forth. He, uh, he sent us an offer that had us getting the Robert Woods, but uh, us paying some, something that I thought was more valuable than Robert Wood. So in essence, he wanted us to pay from to go from 1-1 to 1-2, and it didn't work out like that. So we took Harris and Kevin moving. But I thought that was like a good shot at getting Robert Woods to uh, – I mean, obviously he's a little older and it is dynasty, but – We do know, need that, some more wide receiver help. We could, we could use some wide re, wide receiver help in this league. And and with the Stafford pickup, I believe Robert Woods is you know still undervalued. Um, so I felt like that was a – he's – on paper, he looks 29, looks horrible, you know, looks like he's mm-hmm. about, to, about to fall off a cliff. And he could be, but I just feel like with the uh, Stafford pickup, it was a good shot. And, and and again, we didn't know if we were getting, potentially getting Robert Woods for letting that guy come up and maybe take Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase. And, you know, so the end, but I guess probably from his, from the one twos perspective, he was like, you know, more than likely these people are taking Harris and that might not be the guy I want anyway. So he basically was like, he's not interested in paying enough to, to make the swap. So we took Harris and kept it moving. Yeah. So we add Harris to it. We can start four running backs basically. Right. We um, already have Dalvin cook. We got Jonathan right. Taylor and we got David Montgomery. We had a fourth running back that we feel great about starting on a week to week basis. So we're basically going to be only rolling out two wide receivers. A wide receiver room is a little weak. We do have DJ Moore, um, but we, you know, T, we like Tyler Boyd. Uh, obviously, Crowder stock just took a hit, but Paris Campbell's on the rise here. We did take Denzel Mims last year, uh, late in the draft. So we have, you know, a pretty good squad ready to ready to move forward here. But we definitely could have used a wide receiver and would have been fine with ETN or Harris here. So we took Harris. Feel great about it. We keep moving. Next next pick is Kyle Pitts off the board. I mean, this is half point tight end, no premium. So just real life scenario here where somebody was just like, boom, I'm going to just flop it on the table. Let me get Kyle Pitts. And, and it was this, there was no trades. It was the, no, the one, he, the guy that we had talked to and he immediately took Kyle Pitts immediately. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I, then the, that's the reason, obviously I knew who the pick was. So when he told me he had two players graded the same, I thought it was the two running backs. And I guess, you know, I don't know what other player he had graded. It could have been Pitts and Chase. Who knows? But he, if we took Harris, he took Pitts 30 seconds later. Yeah. Which means there's an opening to try and come up and get ET. The first time someone passes on ET, his value gets lesser. That's when you try and pounce, which we try to do. So back into Big Coast Corner. Well, we had one five. And then right. so obviously one threes on here. And we also have one twelve. So we have some draft capital and we have some uh ammunition to make to make some moves here. So um Javante Williams gets selected here, but before that, there was a lot of uh decent amount of trade dialogue over there with with in Big Co's head. We're at one five, one threes on the clock, UTN's still there. Um and in my mind, if two picks go by, we're gonna be quote unquote stuck with Javante Williams. I'm talking to the one three guy and I'm like, hey, what does it take to go from one five to one three? And of course, you know, we all do the uh ceremonial dance and say, you know, love all these guys. It doesn't matter. You know, he's like, I I I love all these guys. So what you know, I I could move back. Yada yada. We 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 get that far down the line of what do you want to give up? So we had the one twelve, he's got the two three and I expected it to cost a little more, um, but he said he would be interested. And, and if if we go, you know, we could go from one five up to one three, and we go from one twelve back to two three. So that would improve. That would bring him in up to a tier that he was like, you know, that I like the idea of going from two three to one twelve. Um, I, in my mind, when we first got the conversation going, I thought I would say that, and then he would say, well, I need something more, and it might come with a second round pick or a third round pick or something like that the following year, but it didn't go that far. He seemed like he was excited to do that. And very short into the conversation, he said, well, and this is a guy, this is a league where we were invited into by one of the Patreon members, um, and it's a home-ish league, so a lot of the guys know each other. Yeah. You know, it's a homish league. Most of the guys are pretty good buddies. Um, we're relative outsiders, but I think there's two or three Patreons in here that, you know, so there's, there's, 
you know, patrons in here. So there's a couple guys that we really know in the in majority of the league. We don't know them at all. He said, well, the one, four guy is definitely taking a running back. He, you know, he was like, I know that for a fact. Um, so, and he was like, I really need you to tell me what position you're looking for. And, you know, of course I'm texting back with Casey and Jay and I tell this guy, I was like, listen, well, you know, I'm telling you, we want to come up to take, we want to go from five to three to take ETN because if I don't tell, if I tell you anything else, it'd be a lie. And this is, you know, then you would never want to trade with me again because I boldly lied to you. I don't, you know, I don't really feel like I could have not answered the question. If I didn't answer the question, it's obvious because I did take a little while to get back to him. And so mm-hmm. he goes, I, since you're reluctant to answer me, I assume you're coming to get a running back. And, you know, I said, I, I was just busy. Smart. Got a lot, got a lot going on. I'm not reluctant to answer you. I want to, I didn't even, it wasn't even about running back. I'll tell you, I want to come up and take ETN. Um, and he said, well, the guy in one four wants to take ETN if he's there. And basically he was saying, you know, we, we did, the, we had to get it without making the story too long. He's like, I like chase and, um, but I want to take a running back. Kind of basically is what he said. You know, he's like, I want to take a running back, but chase is too good to pass on. And he's, you know, he's my highest ranked player on the board. I got him. I had him at one, two. He's here at one, three. I should be taking chase. We had to go through that whole situation for a while. And of course I'm like, yeah, I like chase too, but we want ETN. He needs a running back. So he, you could look at his team. You could tell he wanted to take a running back. And so basically his, his call was, I'm going to take, he said, I will take chase here and trade him to you because I told him I like Chase because who who would, who doesn't like Chase? Sure. And he was basically like, I'm going to take Chase. I'll take Jamar Chase at 1-3. The guy behind me is going to take ETN. And then there's John, Javante Williams going to be there at 1-5. And then basically he was like, can we do, we'll do a gentleman's handshake here <laughs> via direct message and we'll, and we'll swap that 1-12 to 2-3 and then I'll give you Chase for Javante Williams. Yeah, got to get that and, notarized first. Right. So yeah. <laughs> I'm uh I'm thinking about it for a little bit and it, it, I'm telling Casey the story and as I'm reading these m- messages to Casey that he was t- typing me back and forth um you know cuz I'm uh, in the middle of that I'm like well why don't you just let me trade up to 1 3 right now and take ETN and that you know, that that way I get what I want so through the back and forth I realized what was going on was this guy 1 3 had he wanted Javante Williams. He had he wanted he preferred Javante Williams over ETN, and he preferred Javante Williams over Chase. And basically, he wanted us to pay him to give us Chase. But he knew because if we came up and got ETN, then the one and, and he traded back to one five, and the one four guy took Javante Williams. He'd have he'd be at one five, stuck with Chase, which is not a bad position to be in. But he wanted to run it back so badly, a gift, but. And sometimes you're in a bad situation. He, so he's in that spot going, I want Javante Williams, but I'm pretty sure everybody else wants ETN. So he doesn't want to lose value. Basically, I, you know, I basically called him not wanting to lose value. He wanted to take Javante Williams all along, but he didn't want to take him at one three. And he wanted to make sure that I wasn't, if if I would have told him I was taking a wide receiver, if I would have lied to him, and told him I was taking a wide receiver to come up. I, I, I would I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that because I don't want to do I don't want to lose a trade partner over something like that. Yeah, because you can't break a trust like that. You know, he asked this and and like you said, he could have just said, Look, man, I can't answer you. But then he would have known anyway. So you might exactly. as well tell him and gain a little bit, you know, like and be honest. So I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. You can't lie to someone about what the because it because it doesn't have to always get there. You know, it's a weird time in trade negotiations where it's like, okay, I need to know who you're gonna take before I even make this pick. And it's like, well, I don't know if I can tell you. It don't it, it, it does it apply to the situation? And because he kind of knew that one four needed a running back and was gonna take a running back, that helped play into looking at his team and what, what could possibly happen. So if the pick swaps are close enough, like this was one, three, one, four, one, five, swapping one, three and one, five, if those picks are close enough, then it does matter, obviously. But then, you know, Hey, well, what if you want the guy I want? I'll tell you who I want. You want that guy where there's no trade, you know, and if you don't want the, and if this, if, you know, if uh, last year in a, in a home league, Casey and I swapped back one pick and, he knew who I was taking. He, I, I was, we swapped, I paid him to let me take Ayuk. 
you know, and that was like, it's a weird situation. Sometimes, sometimes the people know, Hey, let me, let me, let me take Ayuk. You take Mims and you get paid a third rounder for it next year. You know, it happens. And, but sometimes it doesn't get asked and sometimes it does get asked and it's awkward. And you're like, man, I can't tell you. Yeah. I'm not telling you what I want to do. I, it's you, fluid. Do you want, so yeah, let it you, play out. And if do it, you want this pick swap? Do you, do you want what I'm paying you to swap with me or not? It's sometimes how you have to answer, but you know, I, we wanted to move up for ETN and he said, he basically was like, I've, if, if you, you know, I know that you want to run it back because you haven't told me otherwise, but you know, and it's like, well, if I, at that point, even then, if I'm like, well, I'm taking a wide receiver and it was either I tell him the truth and we got a deal done or I don't tell him the truth and, or, or I just sit tight and we're gonna, not going to get ETN. It was very apparent that we were not going to get ETN because he basically told me, that the guy at one four wanted ETN and and the and he's sitting at one three and wants a running back. So it was like, I tell you what the deal is and we make a deal and I'm trying my best to get ETN. And then once, you know, once it all kind of flattened out and it was, you know, we realized and I told Casey, it's like, dude, he just wants he wants to take Javante Williams, but he doesn't want to take Javante Williams. He wants to take Javante yeah, Chase. He, and then, he wants to get paid to take get, the guy he wants later. Exactly. He wants to take he wants to take Jamar Chase at three and have a ha, have a gentleman's agreement with us to swap that pick with Jamar with Javante Williams when we take Javante Williams at one five. Which and I'm not a, mad at him. I'm not mad at him for trying to know, do that. You know, that's something you should be trying to do. If you he, he knew the value was to take Chase there, and so he was trying to get somebody to take ATM, Chase there yeah. for him and, and, and not right. not lose out on the guy he really wanted. But we kind of discern. We figured that out, and Big Co was like, "Let's just let's just let him make the pick and call his bluff because I think he's going to take Javante Williams." And we were like, "All right, man, we're just going to sit tight, right?" Is that how that ended? Of course, and uh, you know, <laughs> I get you know, and uh, it was obvious after it all kind of we figured it out. It was obvious what was going to happen, and 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 then if he would have taken Javon, Jamar Chase, then we get in the running back anyway at one five. And we had plans. We we had trade offers on the table for one five already, and we had plans for one five if Javante Williams was there. And it turned out he, you know, he made the pick. He took Javante Williams, which if he if it was him, he should have taken ETN. If he wanted to run it back so bad, and everybody else wanted ATN, and he wanted Javante Williams, the way you play that is just take ATN. And then if the one four guy wants ETN bad enough, once he's not there anymore, if he's then you have you you call his bluff. If he's if he tells you he wants ETN, but he's okay with Javante Williams, we'll take ETN and make him make him pay to, to swap with you then. But you know, he, that's, that's he didn't want to get help, caught help holding the bag there and get a player that he didn't want necessarily because he said he wanted Javante Williams, which you know that's not a, the right that's move. Exactly but, right. That's how that's he felt. So he didn't want you know he didn't want to get dude. caught holding the bag. So I. I see what you're saying, Big Cole, but that's that's taking a little bit of a gamble, and you have to be fine being stuck with him in case, you know, you don't call his bluff there at one four. Yeah, again, you're you're talking about being fine being stuck with somebody that, on average, everybody else wants more than the guy you want. Yeah. And so, yeah, but you're right, Jay. If you, you once you put that nail in, maybe it doesn't come back out, and maybe you got ATN. Um, so the dude made his play. I can't blame him for what he was trying to do at all. He mm -hmm. made the pick. And of course, after he made the pick, he texted me that he changed his mind. The way to do that is to text me, hey, man, you call my bluff. Good job. You know, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I, this past weekend, last weekend, I was in a draft and I was at Jay told Jay texted me and said, hey, because you're getting called out on the Patreon discord because you got your you're, you're about to get auto picked. And I was at the one seven in a super flex league and. <laughs> I pulled it up and I had like 30 minutes left on the timer. And apparently it was only an hour timer because I got all to pick the rest of the way out of the draft. Um, but <laughs> I, Jesus. the guy, one eight, Big Co. Zach, Wilson, Zach Wilson was still on the board. Not to be confused with glasses, Big Co. <laughs> Zach Wilson still, on, I'm, at, I'm on the, this is a quick story, but this is exactly the same exact situation that just happened with this other league. I'm at one seven. I want to <laughs> take ETN, but Zach Wilson's on the board. So I text the dude at one eight real quick and I'm like, Hey, swap me your one, your three, seven for my two set. Give me your two, seven for my three, five or whatever. Let me move up into the second round and I'll give you the quarterback here because I got good quarterbacks. I don't want to take Zach Wilson here, but I absolutely will because he's going to be a day one starter in week one. And he's going to be worth way more than the running back. And 
the dude, he sent me a trade offer. It wasn't exactly what I asked him for. It was basically moving from a fourth round to a third round or something like that. And I was driving down the road and it was just a hectic situation. And I didn't have much time by the time I figured out what was going on. And, um, we didn't get a trade done and I didn't have time to talk him into it. And as soon as I, I made the, I literally got down to the last few seconds. I took ETN and I immediately texted him. I was like, good job, man. You know, you called my bluff. I didn't want, I didn't want to take Zach Wilson. I want to take ETN. I have plenty of quarterbacks in this league and I needed to run it back and you called my bluff. And he was like, you know, haha, good stuff. So basically it's the same situation that we just had, but after it was over with, I was like, you know, basically handshake, you call my bluff. Whereas this guy in this league, he was like, oh, I changed my mind. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You wanted Javante Williams. Yeah. So made him take Javante Williams and not get paid. Which I will say we had very good trade talks with that guy. And yeah. we we I had we had good sure. messages back and forth and I have no zero hard feelings and I enjoyed the process and I think he did too. I'm not upset at all with Matty something something. Mm-hmm. Oh. Matty O uh, so we basically uh, from now from one three to one four we're working on trying to get a deal done to move up to get Travis ETN one way or another. Jason wants to give a little bit more to get ETN, and at this point we're basically locking it in Jamar Chase for free at one hundred five without having to make any sort of moves. Right, which I didn't um, think that you guys would be down with trying to give something up to move up to one four, and I didn't really think the guy at one four wanted to trade with us anyway. But it's like. You guys seemed into giving up a little something to to guarantee us getting ETN, which I'm all for. So I hit him up, and and he he basically asked for Jonathan Taylor to move back one spot. And I was like, okay, well, you don't want to trade with us, so that's fine. Yeah, Just take whoever you're taking. And and he was like, no counters? And I was like, Mo, you started with Jonathan (laughs) Taylor. Well, there's nothing to counter here, man. Like, he's the second best player in the league right now if you're drafting a startup dynasty squad and – you can't have him to, for me to come get ETN. So, so he took he took ETN, and then we're on the five. We're on the clock at one five. And Jamar Chase. I almost didn't even ask y'all boys what to do. I almost just took Jamar Chase, but <laughs> it goes over there, and he's got the the Zach Galifianakis numbers flying around with the trades, trying to work them out. And so I was like, all right, I'll let's sit on the pick. These boys are gonna get mad, but who cares? We'll just we'll, we'll try and work out a trade. Which usually we're able to work out a trade. Um, that's what this show's about is talking about trying to work out these trades, especially when you have ammunition. You don't just need to go into the draft thinking you're going to make all these picks. You can move around. You can move up, especially with this slow clock. And as, you know, we get deeper into this, people or move back the clock and, and, and willing to trade and move around and stuff. So you just have to feel it out. Keep on it. It's part of the fun. Don't rush it. You know, have some fun. Make yeah. some moves. Inquire. Maybe it doesn't work out and you just end up making the picks anyway. But uh, but that's part of why right. this is so fun and where you can get your guy, you can find value, and, and every room's different. So, uh, what what were we thinking at one five there, Biko? Or what what do you got, Case? Yeah, what you got, Case? Um, pass. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we had had dialogue with the um, AJ Brown owner for that had a big part of the. We were trying to get AJ Brown, and we were. We had offered before the draft a month. You all right, Case? You yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You need fan? You need a fan on your face? Nope. Good. Ready to um, roll. Ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> before the dra- a, a month before the draft, we had offered um, the one five and uh, David Montgomery and maybe a second round pick for AJ Brown. Once the NFL draft happened and the actual real rookie draft happened and people got a little bit more comfortable with some of these players and some of the guys that aren't necessarily as knee deep in it as we are caught up to the excitement about some of these rookies, then the trade talks for uh, 1-5 heated up and we were getting inquiries about 1-5 from the get-go. Um, but the one that kept coming back around was the guy, uh, Dave for what AJ Brown and I didn't have any, we, we didn't, I don't think collectively we have any AJ Brown and, and dynasty. So we were like, well, that's the I guy to diversify. That's the guy we want to try to spend our, 
Uh, and we need a, a receiver. Hall. We gotta have so, her. We, you know, we, we, we really. I mean, we don't have to have one, but we need, we need a, a receiver. big time receiver to really put a cherry on this team. Well, go like yeah. I mean, we this was all before Jamar Chase was on the board at one five, right? So there was we were Dave Montgomery one five and a second round pick next year for AJ Brown. What can we do? Blah blah blah. Um, and it feels like there was some steam. We and 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 the farther along we got, it was like all right that trade kind of went away when that trade came back it was actually we were given a second getting back a third and the messages back and forth seemed like we were kind of close on a trade during that entire time while we were trying to trade up to one three and this and that like we're the idea was the one five was going to be javante williams and when javante williams was on the board because dave needs a running back bad he's got a bunch of good he's got a bunch of good receivers and he needs a running back really bad especially in a half ppr league after the first year people realized i mean he won the championship so his team's not bad at all but he really needs a he's got alvin kamara and nothing else and some good receivers and i think he's like all right well i need you know if he he won the championship but i don't think going into next year he's an overwhelming favorite to repeat by any means he did a good job that's how fantasy football works Anybody can win a championship in a year if you got a decent team. He's got a pretty yeah, good suck team. Yeah, Dave. <laughs> but, I mean, he's not like you know. Congrats, Dave. <laughs> good job, Dave. But you, yeah. you're, you're not you're not like the overwhelming favorite, and I think Dave realizes that, and he's trying to be proactive about it. So I salute that, and he we're trying to work out a deal. Well, as we get closer, and all of a sudden, the one when the one three pick hits, Pitts goes and Javante Williams goes, and all of a sudden we've got basically Jamar Chase or Trevor Etienne. One four went, CT, I just combined the two clumps together. One four went quickly. <laughs> one four went off the board fast. So it was like one three but, went, but, one one four went pretty well, quick. No, I mean, then, but we were we were negotiating with Kirsch, uh, you know, for four. one four for a second. He held off. He usually is a snap picker, but you know, I hit him up right away, like, hey, we might be interested. So it didn't snap off. I remember like distinctively looking at the trades and like if you send out the trade, like we the three of us share a team, you if you didn't send out the trade, you can't take it down. So all of a sudden, it was ETN or Jamar Chase that we were going to get at 1-5, and we had a deal, or we had a, a trade out there for 1-5, David Montgomery, and getting back A.J. Brown. And I was like, we, let's take that down, because now it's that's Jamar Chase or Travis ETN at the 1-5, and that's too much to give date for A.J. Brown, at least in my opinion. If we're asking, you know, if we're taking votes here, that would be too much, especially since, you know, I feel like David Montgomery is is one of the biggest wieners of the, of the offseason as far as, <laughs> coming out and, and, and going into next season, like he could absolutely murk. And I didn't, you know, I didn't want to just give him up. But but is that is that is that where you're kind of going here in Big Co? Because I, I'm, I'm curious what you guys thought of that. We took that trade down. And now in retrospect, you know, we could still potentially make that trade. And, and he probably well, sure, like, would take it. I think that was the biggest part of taking the trade real quick is that Jamar Chase isn't going anywhere. If we want to make the trade, like we could just take him and still, we could still, if we want to make a deal for AJ Brown, I'm sure we could figure it out. Once, there, yeah. once we got to one five and Jamar Chase was on the board, the dialogue between Dave and I, it completely changed. It, you know, Dave was like, I didn't expect Jay, Jamar Chase to be there. And I was like, of course we certainly didn't. <laughs> we can't, you know, so like, and I, I'm working with two other guys here and we're, you know, we're two out of two against one on pretty much everything we do if we're if it's not uh, you know three people agreeing on something unanimous now that jamar chase is on the board and we're just going to take him and hopefully we can figure something out with you but i guess that what we've offered to you for a, a month now and we've talked a whole bunch about it today that's not possible because we had no idea Jamar Chase was going to be there. We need a receiver, and now Jamar Chase is looking us in the face. And so that was kind of just what, how that turned out. And that was one. That's one of those things like where, you know, this is a fun league here because there's obviously there was a couple of people when we were doing the first the draft last year, the startup draft last year that wouldn't trade at all, and they said they were two of them were honest and was like, "This is my first dynasty league startup draft, and I don't want to trade because I don't know what I'm doing." And I I respected that, so that's two people right away. A couple of people in here patrons, so they know exactly what me and Casey and Jay want to do because we tell them each and every week um, and answer any questions they have about what they should do with their team. So they they know pretty much everything we want to do. So that's and, and we still made trades with those guys, but it's just kind of like we're an open book for those guys. Um, and then a couple of people in here that have been in leagues together for them by them 
together for a long time and they were kind of working deals between themselves and this and that, you know, so, so fun league, different league, um, mixed bag. And it was the quarantine league. We were heart deep in the middle of quarantine when nobody had anything to do. So it was a good time to start it up. Yeah. Right. Right. So it was just, you know, you you just don't know, you don't know where it's going to go. You don't know who you're going to do deals with. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we go through those first two picks. We don't end up getting anything done in, in any of those deals. You know, sometimes the, the picks fall as they may, and you just want to take those guys. But like Jay said before, um, there's really no reason to not go into this. Get on the clock. Take your time. Figure out if you can work a deal to get some some veterans, A-plus players, or guys you might like. Maybe you want to diversify a little, all those things above, but take your time. Don't get bullied on the clock and go out there and, you know, like nothing. We didn't even get anything done, but, we, you know, we we did spend hours talking to people, mostly big cove uh, in this scenario here. Well, where but I was like, going with that was we offered him a bunch yeah, and he didn't want to necessarily trade AJ, but he said he would trade AJ because he needed a running back. He put it in the league. That's where it all came from. Mm -hmm. He put out a note to the league and said, AJ Brown's on the block for a running back. And I guarantee you the best offer he got was from us with um, Mon David Montgomery plus. Um, obviously, David Montgomery isn't nearly on the level of AJ Brown. It's not even close, the value of those two guys. But in a half PPR league, and it's hard to find a good running back to start. David Montgomery crushed it down the stretch last year, and Are we were off the last five, six games of the season. And, and and we tried, we were trying to hammer him over the head to take this trade, and we tried to add something to it, and add some to it, and work around some of the special pieces in the back, and all that fun stuff. And then once we got to one five, and Jamar Chase was on the board, we we're like, sorry, can't make that. We can't, uh, we can't do that. Yeah. And so if he he didn't want to take it, he was on the fence about taking it. And he said, oh, actually, I'm actually pretty close to taking it. I think we can do something. I really want to see what happens and who's on the board at 1-5. I think he wanted to see if it was who's, if it was going to be Javante Williams or Travis Etienne. Yeah. And, and then to see how much extra he needed to push it over the top. But then once it was Jamar Chase on the board, of course, I'm not going to tell him we preferred to have Etienne. But, and, and there was a conversation that, in, and that was in the last um, video we just put out. Sure. Um, that I was totally fine with this team needing a wide receiver to not to I would have I would have had no problem us taking Jamar Chase over to ETN at one three if we had the choice to make so you know a two to gets one we'd have taken ETN and I'd have been fine with it I know Jason won ETN I wasn't going to argue one bit but my vote my vote would have been for Chase and especially after we had Harris Dave didn't make the deal he wasn't comfortable he wasn't comfortable and then. The, the way it played out, 1-5 just became so much more valuable. Then we got it, uncomfortable. Then we got uncomfortable. So <laughs> and the wait, 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 but, but also, but also very, but also very comfortable. Also very comfortable because we just got Jamar Chase. The roles right. reversed. You I'm know, uncomfortable so. with the thought of not having Jamar Chase after he was dunked in our laps. Like. Right. So while 1-2 and 1-3 is on the clock, we're sitting there trying to hammer home this deal to get this deal done and then if he would have taken the deal at one when all those picks rattled off and then jamar chase was there at one five we had already given up one five we would there would have been some a little bit of seller's remorse but the whole time we were still working on one three as as trying to get up into that spot as well so i mm -hmm. feel like we kind of pushed that trade to the back burner a little bit while angling for one three Right, because we still have the 112, and we still have David Montgomery, so we have pieces right. to go and try and get another wide receiver. Godwin was on the block. There was discussions about him, and 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 he put him on the block, and Big Co was like, hey, we need to make a play for Godwin because if we don't, he's going to probably sell him too cheap. And we didn't want to – say I think the same guy had Godwin has had a H.A. Brown, so if he trades yeah. one, he's not going to trade the other. And, you know, he we didn't end up – we didn't want to pay for Godwin because we were still trying to get A.J. Brown, still trying to get – Maybe make the pick at one five, and he ended up selling selling Godwin for for a deal to whoever got him. So that was a bit of a bummer. But we're on the clock at one five, and that was part of your. Again, we got on the clock and sat, but Big Cub, part of your deal was that you know we didn't want to didn't want to pull the trigger on this trade, even though the AJ Brown trades were probably off, but we were still trying to work for a Godwin trade, and you felt like. You know, if we pulled that trigger, as soon as we pulled the trigger and we're no longer on the clock, like that Godwin deal would get done and it was probably going to be for, you know, a good deal. And you were like, well, let's hold on to this clock here and start working this Godwin deal. So, yeah, I got the, I could tell by messaging Dave had Godwin and he had um, AJ Brown. 
And I could tell he said he wanted to get a one five or one, be in one six or one seven. And he wanted to, you know, have he wanted one of those three guys. Um, and of course, it, you know, again, he didn't expect Chase to be there at one five, but apparently he wanted one six and one seven. And he said, because the guy at one six said he would trade back. And Dave, I could just tell by the messages, you know, I don't have them in front of me right the second, but I just told, I told you guys, I was like, he's going to, he's going to trade Godwin because he said he would trade Godwin and he was offering us Godwin stuff. And he said, you know, I could, I just said, if, if we make this pick at one five, the one six guys are going to be on the clock. Cause he had said something about the one guy, the one six guy putting pressure on him. And I was like, you know, he was like, I was like, well, I'm I'm not, I, I won't make the pick. Well, let's, let's make a, let's make a play here. Let's, let's figure something out. And that way the one, six guy's not even on the clock to put you under pressure. And again, I guess it was just the psychology of it and, and the personal values. Like he was really, really keeping AJ Brown close to the vest, but the way he was talking about wanting to get rid of AJ Brown of Chris Godwin, you could just tell the values were way off. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, he was, he had really devalued Chris Godwin. He was like, um, I could sell AJ Brown for a fortune or I could just kind of like sell it you know godwin for something I right, need to get right. one of these I think receivers he had the one team. i think he had the 111 and he and and, and i don't remember exactly there's been a lot of rookie drafts since then for me um that was the beginning of the rookie draft season for ffpc that kind of happened like the day before or something that was on thursday and rookie draft start ffpc started on saturday yeah, this was so. all all yeah. woven together there a lot, right, of, right. a lot of rookie drafts going on so at once. i don't remember exactly why we didn't get chris godwin um i really tried hard to get chris godwin but i think there was so much effort in the aj brown trade that the chris godwin thing just didn't happen and i was telling him hey don't trade don't sell chris godwin for cheap send me an offer whatever the offer is if I'm from the other guy i got a feeling it's not going to be a lot and let me get a chance to to beat it basically you show I was, us an offer we'll beat it I, was, I basically said like don't sell chris godwin too cheap give me an idea of what you're going to get paid for it and let me know and we sat there long enough to talk about different stuff and it's like all right well we're, we're let's just take jamar chase because if we're going to do a deal for aj brown we could have given we could have easily at that point given jamar chase and eight and and David Montgomery for AJ Brown if we wanted to that was apparent he was asking what it took to get that deal done like AJ Brown plus what makes that deal um and we right. were we were like all right well, let's definitely look at this trade later let's just go ahead and take Jamar Chase and, and move on and then I was like well he's not going to trade Godwin and AJ Brown so I was like well I, I really want AJ Brown because I got Chris Godwin a couple times and I want AJ Brown and then boom it has it went through just like I, I knew it would. I've had the six feeling in my stomach, and it's like, dude, this good. I can't believe like Nobody's he's getting could, a better deal at me. Why, why, <laughs> Son why, of a bitch. Why would you do that? And like he he traded, he gave away Chris Godwin to go from one eleven to one six. I think he might have got a second round pick next year, but that shit don't matter. Those yeah. things are not even in the same stratosphere. You just gave up a young stud wide receiver, and he came up and he took Devontae Smith at one six, which is fine to take Devontae Smith at one six. But if you had to give up Chris Godwin to get there, that is bad, 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 bad. That is a no no. It seems I don't know if it's his picture or what, but in his picture he's got an eagles hat on and they're all just a decent amount of them have eagles as their thing so you know that he he had to get his guy and devonta smith there so that really he was like oh you know once this happens then i you know i'm gonna just trade godwin and i'm gonna get devonta smith and then you know that was like you if if that's the way you want to play your rookie draft if you have to go from 111 up to 16 and off the quote-unquote top fives or guys are gone you have to do that with draft picks because those other draft picks, you could be picking busts and you could be picking bad players. You cannot give away a Chris Godwin to make that move. Like, you, if yeah, anything, if anything, you give Chris Godwin by himself, not with the 111, and you give Chris Godwin and they give you the 1-6 and plus something. Like, because yeah. if, if you're taking... Devonte Smith over Chris Godwin in a startup. I think you're doing that wrong. Straight up, I'm not. Getting, <laughs> I'll take Chris. I'll take Chris Godwin over over Devonte Smith in a startup. I mean, nothing wrong with Devonte Smith, but at least for the next year, he's got Jalen Hurts throwing in the ball, and Jalen Hurts is not going to do what Tom Brady can do for Chris Godwin. There is no chance that Devonte Smith comes close to J, to to Chris Godwin's PPR point. I mean, half PPR. It, Fantasy points. Half PPR. It doesn't matter what you're playing. 
It, there's yeah. no chance that Devontae Smith does what – and I, yes, obviously Devontae Smith's a rookie, but Chris Goff was still very young. And if something happens crazy and, Devo- and, and Jalen Hurts wins, like Lamar Jackson – Without yeah. giving the ball very much to his wide receiver, because I mean, he's still got Jalen Rager, they still got Dallas Goddard, and you know, they got plenty of guys that can catch the ball without it being, you know, isolated to one guy, the heavy, mm-hmm. you know, concentrated volume on one man. And so, I mean, Jalen Hurts could rattle off two, three years as a starter, and Devontae Smith be very hard and outside of best ball, you know, like he, right. You don't know when he's, it's not going to, there's no way he's out there just consistently putting up. Chris Godwin numbers. Chris Godwin's got Tom Brady for the next couple of years. Yeah, well, and the thing with Chris Godwin is, is he's already been up on that pedestal. It's weird that he hasn't been kind of re-anointed up to that pedestal that he's like, he kind of yeah. actually like showed that he was awesome and Tom loved him and then he had that broken finger and kind of had some drops and whatnot, but like, I mean, Godwin just, I, I don't know why he hasn't seeming to like climb back up to where he was on the pedestal where he probably Chris, is more Chris, deserving now than he was before. Chris God was one of my biggest dynasty buys this year and redraft too. Mm. I mean, you're just boom. getting so late. Like boom, Chris, boom, boom. This just in Chris God was one of my biggest, uh, you need to be, you need to be sure. I love this it. guy. There, there's I'm with you. The value for some reason, uh, the ADP drop makes zero sense. The yep. the the Bronx the the, the recency Bucks, bias at its best man the Bucks couldn't get on a, the Bucks didn't get on a roll until week twelve and Chris Godwin had a broken finger like both yeah. doesn't doesn't that I mean uh, one of those broadcast games they were basically talking about how much Tom Brady was just gushing about how awesome Godwin was and how he's like so ridiculous and never drops anything and I think he proceeded to drop multiple balls at least that two game. yeah but, yeah yeah he had, he had something going on but Godwin's a stud man like yeah. this is it's it's just odd, oh, like, you, like you guys get, are saying, that like he should be back up here, and now he's just seems like he's kind of not that he's low ADP by any means, but I'm I'm with you. I'm, I think there's you got to put some respect on his name. Again, congrats, championship, Dave. But uh, Dave just comp- I went that type of trade. You really hurt your chances of repeating. Congrats, Dave. You blew it. <laughs> <laughs> And I think we told, I think we probably had something bad to say about Dave's uh, operations last year in the startup (laughs) and he won the championship. Yeah, it's good luck for him at this point. Pie pie in the face. Yeah. So if we, you, at at this point, Dave needs us to be trashing him every off season. He could bring, bring home three or four consecutive titles. Yeah. So anyway, again, make, spend a ton of time on the clock there. We're wrapping multiple trades, trying to have things going on and we don't actually even get anything done. Uh, So well, we did yeah. piss off a bunch of people in the chat, so that's nice. That's always yeah. a plus. In the chat? Don't, don't get well, drafted. If you don't make a pick right away, uh, everyone gets mad. I don't know if they're really mad. I think they're just. You're just. They're, yeah, you're you're going back. You and got forth thinner skin than thin skits than thin Stanley. Yeah. I'm, okay, I'm Charles. Made, <laughs> I came along. I made three or four trade partners during this draft. Even though we didn't get the deals done, I got I got some yeah. good stuff. You got, laying groundwork, you know? Yeah. You got to have the Army Corps engineers come in and lay the bridges until, on the groundwork. Until, you know, I'm, I know that Dave's going to see this video and be like, I hate that guy. Fuck him. But he shouldn't. But he shouldn't. Yeah, I said nothing wrong. Dave's I fine. nothing wrong. Dave's I, fine. I like Dave. Dave needs to learn how to send a trade offer. <laughs> Dave doesn't send. <laughs> Dave sits and waits. They, oh yeah, a lot of there is. I think there's more receivers than givers in this league for sure. Yeah, yeah, yep, figuratively yep. and literally. Um, <laughs> you gotta, um, you gotta send them sometimes. You gotta send them. You yep. can't just wait and be the receiver all the time. You're gonna miss 100 percent of the swings you don't take. So, <laughs> all right. So, Devonte Smith goes off at one six. Anybody have anything else? As I rattle off some picks here until we get back to our pick. All right. Devonte Smith one six. Jalen Waddle one seven. Um, Trey Sermon one eight, uh, Trevor Lawrence one nine, Rashad Bateman one ten, Batman, Batman, Michael Carter one eleven. Which Jeez. those were all wonderful picks. Right. I was very excited. All those picks went off the board before so Terrence Marshall and Rondell Moore. We're sitting at. 112 peaches and cream particular juncture so when we see sermon and carter go off the board we're excited we got guys that are falling to us that we like like we talked in the last podcast not that there's anything against trey sermon or michael carter i just have them down a little bit in value i mean that's tough for me to even say putting green boxes below blue boxes on sleeper but um so with all those picks go off the board, we're sitting at 112. So we're basically teed up for Terrace Marshall, Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, uh, 
Trey Lance, Justin Fields, kind of whatever we want to do here. We got we are the king of the castle. Um, and we have Ryan Tannehill, so we don't need a quarterback per se. But Fields and Lance are very appealing because of the rushing. So maybe we get a little too cute here. I regret what we did, but let's get into it. I don't All right. By the Go way, ahead. it was Mother's Day, man. Why? Why? Why do you have to do the draft so early? Can we? Can we wait a little bit? Post Mother's Day draft from here yeah, on out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you ungrateful pricks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should have been hanging out with your mom. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's get let's go back to Big Co for pick one twelve. Big Co well, live, <laughs> live down on the sidelines <laughs> for the replay. He's ready um, to roll. Well, Jay said he regrets it. I don't regret it for this team. Um, this is a six touchdown pass point, six point per touchdown pass league, um, and Ryan Tannehill did very solid for the team last year. Um, the team wasn't necessarily constructed to be fantastic in year one. Again, we were trying to have a good time. It's a hundred bucks divided by three. Um, we wanted some first round picks so we could have this much fun in the draft. We didn't know if we'd make these picks. We didn't know if we trade them all for one monster stud. We didn't know how it would go, but we gave up a couple of spots last year in the startup to be able to have this much fun. The team wasn't necessarily built to win year one. And we had some holes and we wanted our holes to be at quarterback because they're easier to find and our holes to be at wide receiver because it's half PPR. Um, and obviously, because we got Dalvin and Jonathan Taylor and Montgomery, we ended up with the one one Harris. We don't have holes at running back. That's what we wanted was no holes at running back. Um, and so we're at one twelve. And of course, Terrace Marshall and Rondell Moore staring us in the face. And we're like, well, that would be awesome. We could use another wide receiver. But my argument was. A Justin Fields or a Trey Lance in this league, their rushing ability could help catapult us into that area that the six point per touchdown pass. Like, obviously, you're like, oh, well, six points for touchdown pass. Everybody gets more points for touchdown pass. But the guys that are throwing a lot of touchdowns are getting a lot more points, kind of like the tight end premium. When I said last week, oh, well, the guys that say tight end premium doesn't change anything. You have no, you obviously don't have any good tight ends on your team and you're not playing tight end premium enough to understand what's going on because that changes the game for the top level. And so those guys that have the guy that has Patrick Mahomes, the guy that has Dak, the guy that has Josh Allen, who's throwing touchdown passes and running around with his legs. Those guys are really tougher to compete with in a league where you get six points. I'm not saying it's impossible. If you got, if you've got a whole bunch of Jonathan Taylors and Dalvin cooks, you'll be okay. But at somebody like a Trey Lance or Justin Fields, I was saying my argument was their rushing ability and especially like a Trey Lance. And I, I, I have a lot of upside in Justin Fields and I think the dude could be awesome. And, but you get Trey Lance on the 49ers with, with Kyle Shanahan, with those weapons, with the obvious what they paid to be able to get him. Like they're going to put him in every position to succeed. And the man is, you know, a, he's a grown ass, he's a kid, but he's a grown ass man and he can run over people like Cam Newton and I was like, I think his rushing ability could give us a chance to have those quarterback points without having four or five touchdown passes a game thrown. Um, and that's that's that was my argument. We ended up trading back because we didn't need we we weren't there was five guys uh, we liked all three of those wide receivers and we liked those two quarterbacks and well let's trade back inside of those five picks, get paid to do it, and then see who's on the board. Which we moved our third up next year to a second. Is that what mm -hmm. we did? Yeah, we got so we have we, two we, seconds next year. We gave a three, got back a two. So now we got two twos next year. And move back to two three. Move back three spots. Two yep. three. So we got to one twelve, two one, two three. So three people were gonna go off the board, three players gonna go off the board, and then we get, you know, the fourth out of those we get we get two of those choices. Two out of those five are guaranteed that we liked were guaranteed to be there. And I think of course the first the next two picks were they um, exactly who we should have taken Terrace Marshall or <laughs> Rondell Moore? <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, it's just like everybody has so many QBs on their team in this league and they're starting to drop them and they're trying to trade them. And it's just well, not in a one QB league. real touchdowns. They might be dropping their fourth quarterback that they had no business having, but they're not dropping real good quarterbacks. I mean, not might yet, but there's there's no point to have four Drew on your Brees squad. Got dropped. Drew Brees got dropped last year when his arm fell off. Like there, nobody's dropping 
Matt Stafford. But well, they are trying I mean, to trade maybe, him. Maybe Lions Matt Stafford, Two. but not Rams Matt Stafford. Yeah, it, it is a shorter bench league, though. So, I mean, once you th- a couple of these guys did draft too many quarterbacks and, you know, now Agreed. they even if they don't want to necessarily drop the really good ones like any of them with two good ones or try it would 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 move a good one. And they're just eventually going to figure out that the price isn't what the price is because it's a one quarterback league. So I think there's, you know, something to be said for that aspect of, of maybe not making this trade. I uh, think that's a really uh, I've actually, now that you say that our, we did talk about that after the draft and that is a really good point, especially for the people that have been watching this video long enough to get here. If you're, if you're this far into the video, I say this a lot, you're really <laughs> into this stuff, right? So it's a short bench league. That was a dis- that was a discussion we had last year. Going into it was there's not going to be it's only a twelve man league, one quarterback, so there's going to be plenty of quarterbacks. Let's not get a quarterback early, and for and then in the middle of draft, people just started snapping up, and it really we were like, well, that's just why we we got to take these players right here. We can't take these quarter. We're not going to take the eighteenth and nineteenth best quarterback. We the y'all boys want to snap them up, snap them up. We'll figure it out. We ended up figuring it out with Tannehill. Tannehill did fine, but that was not something that was talked about in the off season or towards the end of the season, middle of the season. We didn't really put it together that next year after going through a full season of these with these guys. See, it, just what Casey just now said. It's a very short bench, very short bench. Not even it's basically a big keeper league. Not even you wouldn't even call this a dynasty league. Yeah, and you now, can only put rookies a squad. You can only put rookies that you drafted on your taxi squad. So like you can't even just like pick up young guys and put them on your taxi squad. And I think so the, like, I don't. What is it? Fourteen or 15, it's actually it's less people to keep every year than than the than the FFPC. Um, yeah, it's not so a lot. It's a very small bench, and if and being one quarterback, um, that was something that we were kind of late to the party on as a group here, as the three of us as a team. Say, Come we on, didn't Jay. address. We didn't did address. You, did you say we, anything about that, Jay? We didn't well, address. It was Mother's Day damn breakfast, man. I was like, we're on the clock. No, we no, can no, take no, a no. second. No, Bo. No, I'm no, talking no. about last week, last month, last year. Yeah, did nobody, you nobody addressed the facts on a fire sale. Right. Nobody addressed the fact that there's this is an oversight on our part after the fact right, when we exactly. were discussing this more of saying like, hey, some of these guys who have the good quarterbacks are, are going to be willing to trade them now. And now if we just hold off, like the price is going to probably come down a little bit here because nobody else is going to trade you these really great players for these quarterbacks and you exactly. can't fucking keep holding them. They're killing you. Exactly. Like, like the guy that has Dak and Josh Allen. He put both of them on the board. As soon as we picked Trey Lance at one at two three, but you know, like we took we took we we literally we were on the board, we we traded back, we took Trey Lance with our pick at two three or whatever pick we traded to, and as soon as we made that pick, the guy that has Trey Lance, I mean the guy that has Dak and Josh Allen said, "I'll trade one of these quarterbacks," and that's exact that's really right when it clicked in, and Casey was like, "Dude, these guys are gonna they're, they're just figuring it out," you know, and that's basically like what I was just now trying to say was that was a mistake on my part, on our part as a whole, as a team of, and, and, and basically like, Hey, let's take it to the people that watch us on these videos and just say, yo, if, if you get, if you find yourself in that position where a bunch of guys that have never really done this before, hog all the good quarterbacks, give it a season and let it breathe because they, if it's, and if it's a deep bench, it really won't hurt them too bad. And they'll right. just have missed out on the value that they should have been drafting good players in the startup. But if it's a short bench, they're not going to be able to keep them. Yeah. They only added one roster spot to this entire roster. And it's like, it's jammed up. Like it's, you have to have you a can't, defense. Right. You can't develop, you can't hold too many dudes and develop a bunch of guys at the bottom of your bench because it's like any sort of injuries or anything along those lines. And it's, it's, it's tough. So, um, and then not being able to put a put like just any rookie on your practice squad, you have right. to have drafted them, which I've never. Or, seen no, you could trade before. for somebody that drafted yeah, them. You, yeah, you just you, yeah. basically you can't pick up a waiver wire rookie and right. plug them. That's what it. You can't pick up a waiver wire rookie. You could trade for somebody else's taxi squad, essentially. Yeah, I like put them there. So, yeah. So that was something that I wanted to bring up. I, I think I I probably regret the trade a little bit here, but we all basically decided that hey, we were okay with moving back here. You know, I was kind of hoping that we might be able to still talk about getting Elijah Moore, and that went off. Uh, that went off the board because that was all three of those picks went. I was like, man, there's probably not a chance that all three of these guys go. We could at least be having a discussion when we get back to the clock, and then it wasn't. 
and Trey Lance was there. And, you know, I love Trey Lance. I am a Niners fan. So if you're going to be like, hey, let me get this guy. We could play Tannehill for a while. Maybe he doesn't even start, but he could go in our taxi squad uh, so he doesn't hurt our 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 bench status there. Um, you know, so I I was OK with it. I, I kind of do wish I would have taken Terrace Marshall or, or Rondell Moore there. Um, but and then maybe tried to trade for a quarterback that was burning a hole in somebody's pocket. Um, but I'm I, I'm not like, ah, that was, uh, you know, the, the fuck up was not having a pre a great pre-draft plan in a meeting and trying to talk through a bunch of different things that we're thinking about. Um, and that's that's really what you need to do when you're in the group dynamic or by yourself, really. Uh, yeah. You need to go over Good all point. that kind of Either stuff. Either way. Yeah, there's 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 a there's a reassessment that should be happening for each league. And of course, you know, every year it gets worse and harder for Casey and I. We got all these leagues and the don the startup is so addicting. You don't it's the best part. It's the best part. So you add on, you make it harder self every year. So and again, this was Mother's Day weekend, but it, it's something that we actually haven't even said yet. It was just a quick vote. It wasn't even something that was on the calendar. So like all of a sudden it was like Wednesday afternoon leading up into this. And they're like, Hey, let's vote on when to start the rookie draft rookie draft. And the vote came out like as soon as everybody's pays. So everybody paid up that night and Thursday morning, the clock started, <laughs> you know? So like Casey said, yes, we should have had a, Hey man, what's the deal? We with should have just waited to pay and, we, and is, delayed the draft. <laughs> that was the move. That was the move. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Correct. Right answer. Right See? answer. Should have had good a meeting answer. about the meeting to not pay him. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, we should have had a meeting that says, hey, what's the deal with this league? What do we learn? What's going on here? What's happening? And there was no such of a meeting. And the meeting hopefully would have flushed out the fact that there's going to be quarterbacks that are more easier to attain than they were. Because it's the dude that the dude that drafted Dak Last year, I tried to trade for Dak, and after he traded him, a few rounds later, I was like, "Hey, what are you doing, two quarterbacks? So you want you want you take this pick here, and we'll fall back a couple of rounds, and you know we'll we'll take Dak or we'll take Josh Allen, whatever you want to do here, but like you don't need this a one quarterback league." And he's, "Oh, I, 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 I really I like I like where I'm at." And of course, now he's like, "Ah, I I could really use a, another good player." I, I do have two good quarterbacks, but I can only play one at a time, and it's a short bench. So anybody want to want a quarterback, you know? And so it's um. And everyone's like, "Nah, we got four. So, right, seats taken, <laughs> seats taken. <Yeah. laughs> All right, so let's just round up. Anybody got anything else? We'll just round. We're we're out of picks now. Yeah, we have um, a single pick, so we didn't care what happens. <laughs> so this is I, I I highly advocate for this though. Um, that you know get get into like two six or above if you can. Two seven and and just try to trade the back half of the draft up there and get get, wait, get try to get in this spot up here because I like I like this group of players and then it kind of falls off and yeah there's some in there that I'm like ooh that's interesting ooh that's fun um, but I feel much better about those these upper guys and and let's get into just the rest of the draft here so Trey Lance at two three so let's back up real quick uh, Terrence Marshall goes or Terrace Marshall goes at one twelve. Uh, Rondell Moore goes at two, one Elijah Moore goes at two, two. We take Trey Lance at two, three, um, gained a second round pick. Like you guys said out of that. Then Diami Brown goes like, I would push him further down the line here. Um, hey, we just, should maybe make these league guys watch another video to, to hear what we think about the rest of these players. Don't you think like <laughs> Justin Fields get goes another next. Click, guys. <laughs> I like, I like the Justin Fields pick there. Um, I think that's a, that's a good move. Like big, after those other guys are gone, like, yeah, give me, give me those Russian quarterbacks that can do their things with their legs and, and aren't certainly aren't slouches on the other part of the game. Uh, St. Brown goes next. Fine with that. Uh, Chuba Hubbard goes next. Fine with that. Um, Kadarius, Tony, Steel. two eight. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Kenneth Gainwell, two nine to an Eagles fan with an Eagles logo. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> But a good guess is, you know, I like, that val- I like yeah. that value there. That's, that's a good, that's a good get. Um, and then Pat Fryer Muth, um, I guess take him there. I mean, I'd probably keep pushing him down, but sure. Why not? Nico Collins here comes off the board next. Zach Wilson, uh, another quarterback followed by Mac Jones into the third. Uh, Stevenson goes off the board at three, two. Who do we got here? Uh, Elijah, sorry, Elijah Mitchell. Mitchell. Goes off the board next. I like that pick. It's the best pick so far after those those good guys. <laughs> Love taking the stab on on him. Then Des Fitzpatrick 
maybe a little early on him, Amari Rogers. Uh, at this point, steal. Jason was uh, trying to hit me up to like trade back in to put another guy on our taxi squad. So we started kind of a couple of bad trades, cheap, easy trades got done for some fab money. And I didn't know that that, that 10 bucks would get some trades done here later in the draft. <laughs> I was throwing a couple, around, but couple yeah. of ducats around over here. <laughs> um, but Amari Rogers, uh, then JV and Hawkins and Kylan Hill, um, Jamar Jefferson, Tylen Wallace. I like that pickup there late. Throw him on your taxi squad in the short bench. Herbert, Matt's, Palmer. Matt, Sis- Matt Cisco took him. He's, he's a patient. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Palmer, good stab there in the late third. We were That's what we tried to trade up to get him. And then Roundtree, Eskridge, Atwell, um, and the rest of the guys just don't matter. Um, so... <laughs> How do you guys feel about that? Everybody's good. You guys, you guys felt good about that draft. Anything that you would have done differently, or what do you, what do you think? I mean, I, you got Najee Harris and Jamar Chase in the same draft. You, you're feeling good. I'm and, good. And, 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 and we mean, picked up a second and got a running quarterback. So, well, that's yeah. I was going to say that too. I mean, I, like there was you a never know how the, you never know from off season to off season and rookie class to rookie class how what how people are going to be excited about second round picks, but having two of them is, is solid. I mean, it gives us ammunition. Um, I would imagine right now that we could trade those two second round picks for a starter, um, a wide receiver, not a running back. Nobody's giving you a running back for two twos, but I guarantee you we could go out and get a, a wide receiver that would like a Tyler Boyd type player. Obviously Sorry, we already got have, him. We already got him. <laughs> But like that would two twos will get you somebody like that um, all day long. So it's basically a, a starter in equity there that we just picked up. Two twos probably get you Paris Campbell. We got him too. Oh, uh, you, you wouldn't One have two to pay might that get for you Paris Campbell. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, three and a four will get you Paris Campbell. Do that, kids. Well, we we picked up Nikhil Harry on the waiver wire. Scooped Bust. him up. We already have tight ends. I don't know. Right after the draft, we could pick up some guys, so we scooped up uh, Nikhil Harry and Gerald Everett. Oh, those are uh, solid pickups. Two, two, two little scoop ups. Makes no sense that they're not in the draft with all those rookies, but better for us because we didn't have any picks to pick hey, them. More for me and you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> didn't have to do anything. I didn't even spend any fab on them. I just zero dollar them bitches. <laughs> Nobody took them. <laughs> all right. Well, anybody yeah. got anything else? Should we get the hell out of here? What? Let's yes. Peace!